called Nebula 3D. Some of you may have seen it from an early demo. We're very close to finishing it, but just trying to make sure that we put it through all of the different tests and uh, I don't know, maybe working on another plugin. A lot of things happening, but I wanted to show you exactly what the workflow is for working on a shot that's rendered out of Cinema 4D. So Nebula 3D is a volumetric rendering plugin for After Effects. We're almost done with it. One of the things that we do with the plugins that we're developing is we really try to put them through real world projects. So in this case, we're using it to create this big smoke monster element. So here's basically how you would set that up from Cinema 4D. So all you have to do is from Cinema 4D, go into your render settings. In this case, we're using Redshift. So we go to the AOV, Show Manager, we add a Z pass. And then we go over here, we set it to a number that's going to work, in this case, 10,000. Full Z normalize, that works. So then inside of After Effects, we have our Z pass right here, and we also have our beauty underneath it. All right, so once we import our render into After Effects, we can create a new layer. We'll hit OK, we're gonna call this Nebula 3D. We're gonna add Nebula. We're gonna go into the light editor, and I'm just going to load this animated cloud preset. So I'm just going to click the plus. It's going to load a sequence. Then we're going to create a light. Spotlight. This looks good. Hit OK. Cool. So this is basically what we have here. We have this volumetric cloud element that's animated. And we also have the volumetric light. But in this case, we're going to turn off the fog. And we're only going to focus on the volume cloud. So if we go down to the volume settings, here's where we can adjust how that looks. Now it's all interactive, so we can play around with the light settings. We can add additional lights, so maybe like a blue point light. Put this right into the middle of the scene and it also works with the light settings. So things like fall off, we can really get some good results. So now, how do we actually integrate this with our render? So what I'll do is just get rid of that camera, go into Nebula 3D, we're gonna go down to the occlusion, we're gonna go to depth occlusion, and we're gonna select our depth pass. Then all we have to do is set the max range to our render, 10,000, then hit okay. And now we actually can see our volume in our scene. We can move it around, we can scale it up, now we can actually play around with some of the lights. So maybe we'll move this light back, turn the brightness down just a bit. There's another nice setting inside of the volume for playing around with the shading. So in this case, there's a little bit of ambient light. So if we turn up the emissive, we can create that nice GI look. And we'll turn this light down a bit and maybe move the point light Right about here. Now the other cool thing is that we can add some nodes to our light editor. So we have our point light. We can add say like a flicker node, connect that, maybe turn it up to like 25 and uh, let's take a look. All right so this is the basic idea on how to use the plugin. There's a lot of settings for optimizing and refining the mats and controlling how the occlusion works and it really is just a lot of fun to play around with real volumetrics in your scene and have it actually interact and occlude with what you're working on. So there's another kind of interesting example where let's say you want to have some headlights, have some volumetric light. So in this case, I've got a couple of lights and you can see that they're tied to the chassis here. So what I can do is add a new solid, add Nebula 3D, and immediately we get this volumetric light effect. But if we go into the atmospheric fog settings, we can turn up things like the noise, increase the amount, and now we actually get real volumetrics. Now, if we were to go into the noise settings, we could play around with this map and actually get some really great results. Maybe turn up the turbulence here, and then maybe go to the settings and turn up the sample quality. Now, it's obviously moving really fast, uh, but if we make the noise pretty large and maybe turn on the motion blur for the layer, you can get some pretty good results. Now, this is working with spotlights, 
but we can also change the shape of the spotlights. So if we go into the light editor, we can turn the size of the light up. And that way it just has a little bit larger base and it doesn't look like it's coming out of a single point. Now I guess one more fun thing we could do is we could add some light rays using the projection node. And uh, this is just a nice look. Maybe you've got, let's see. I don't know, you've got two high powered projectors on your truck, you're driving around. It's like a drive-by movie theater. I don't know. Anyway, we're really cooking up some cool things and uh, we're really excited about all the features that are inside of this plugin. And just for fun, here's a teaser video showing off some other cool stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Had a great time working on this project. Hope you guys are doing well. Take care of yourselves and enjoy the show, enjoy the stream, and we will see you next time.